Welcome everyone to Bystander Intervention at Legal Workplaces. I'm your facilitator. My name is Ama Kari Kari Yawson Esquire. I'm a diversity trainer and consultant. So let me tell you what we're going to do. I'm going to continue to welcome you. We'll have a brief introduction. Then we're going to define explicit bias, implicit bias, and microaggressions. We're going to then delve into the bystander effect. And then this is the beauty of it. This is what you're going to come, with, come away with upstander intervention techniques before we conclude and close. So a little about me. My name is Ama Kari Kari Yawson, and I'm the founder of a company called Miles Tales. Now, prior to starting my own company, Miles Tales, which is a publishing company and a training and development company that focuses on diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging. Before that, I was an attorney working at Citigroup. I did bond disclosure and all sorts of disclosure at Citigroup. And prior to that, I was at Cleary, Gottlieb, Steen, and Hamilton. So now you know more about me. And let's get on to the topic. Now, uh uh-oh, I was rushing ahead. (laughs) Before getting on to the topic, I'd like to set the intention. I I watched a program, right? Because as a trainer, I have to be trained. And so I did a training program on best practices when engaging in Zoom presentations or any sort of electronic presentations. And this person said, it's always great to set the intention. And I thought that was really powerful. And since then, I've been doing it. So what is the intention, right? How do I want you all to feel as participants? I want all of you to feel as if we are in this journey towards diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging together. I want to set an intention in which we are going to have grace with ourselves and each other that we're learning, but we're not just learning so that it's in our minds. We're learning because we want to apply it. It's learning for the sake of application. It's learning for the sake of cross-cultural understanding. I want you to leave here with tools for positive change, and I want you to have confidence afterwards in your communication. I don't want you to stop communicating because you're afraid of saying the wrong thing. I want you to have a little more confidence in your communication and Especially, I would like you to have confidence in your communication because we are setting a tone of humility and grace. All right, so let's get on to our definitions. So first definition, explicit bias. So explicit bias is really what most people think about when they think about bias. When most people are thinking to themselves, Oh my goodness, what type of horrible behavior is that? This person is so biased. This person is so prejudiced. Many people are thinking about explicit bias, right? So for example, the assertion that blacks are intractably and probably biologically inferior in intelligence to whites and Asians, uh, that statement is in the bell curve, the book called The Bell Curve. That's an explicit bias. It's not implicit. It's not subconscious. The author is very consciously saying, I believe that black people are probably biologically inferior in intelligence to whites and agents. Explicit bias. And many of you would would hear this and say, oh my goodness, that is terrible. How could anyone write that? I mean, humanity is so varied and diverse and we all have intelligence regardless of our color. Most of you would say that, at least you would say that externally on a conscious level. Let's look at some more examples of bias. We have from the Ku Klux Klan website, and the Ku Klux Klan probably is the poster organization for bias and prejudice and racism and all other sorts of isms. But if we go to their website, they say on their website, we support a national law against the practice of homosexuality, which would include the repeal of gay marriage laws. Again, very explicit. They are not mincing words here they would like a national law against the practice of homosexuality. They want to repeal gay marriage laws. They privilege heterosexual marriage and heterosexual relationships above same-sex marriage and same-sex relationships. Again, very, very clear. This is another quote from the Ku Klux Klan website. America is being overrun by illegal immigrants, mostly from non-white countries. Immigration should remain open to all white Christians throughout the world. Wow. Again, very plain. They do not want immigrants who are non-white and non-Christian. No beating around the bush. 
They're not engaging in any covert behavior here. They would like a country which is only open to white Christians. So that's explicit bias. And many of us hear these statements and we say, oh my goodness, how could people think like this in 2022? What is wrong with those people? And we pat ourselves on the back because we say we are open-minded, we are progressive, and those sort of thoughts have no place in our minds, no place in our hearts. 